All right, now we're down to uh, valve springs. So I've got the valve springs, uh, a couple of these actually in, uh, in front of us here. But let's go over the page first here. So the valve spring types, uh, we have square springs, which is just a single square spring where if we were to look at, you know, let, let's lay something across the top of this spring and then run something up and down the side of the spring, it would be a 90 degree angle on both the top and the bottom. And that's what it's considered a square spring. Uh, and it's a tradi traditional design. It's very common, um, or it was very common. And then we have uh, multiple springs or dampened springs. So we have... This spring right here is what's called a dampened spring. And it's actually got two springs in it, but one of them is not a, a spring to close the valve. It's there for another reason. But we see inside this spring, we have a, a flat wire. And that flat wire is actually rubbing on the coils. And another thing, if you noticed, you see that that coil on the inside, the flat wire coil, the coils are angled this way but then the round wire coil is wound this way. And the, way they, the reason they do that is because this flat wire coil is gonna contact multiple spring sections so that when that valve is opening and closing, the spring doesn't vibrate. It doesn't get into a, normal, uh, a natural harmonic range and the valve actually open when it's not supposed to. So that's what's called a dampened spring. There are valve springs out there that have two coil springs, an inner spring and an outer spring. Those are just multiple springs. And when you get into to racing, they'll go from having a single spring to dual, and some of them actually have three springs uh, layered inside each other. So the next style we have is a, a progressive rate or a tapered spring. Uh, and it's tapered not because of its shape, but it's tapered because of pitch. So if we were to measure the, uh, the pitch on this thing, so we're going to have to start from here, here, and here. We see that uh, across this distance we've got three coils. But if we look at the bottom of the spring, we've got that one, that one there, and then this bottom coil. Notice that this section is a lot closer. It's a taper in the pitch. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, I think one of the biggest reasons is what this creates is a much bigger contact on the, on the bottom uh, against the cylinder head. So this spring actually has more support across the bottom of the head. Uh, the other thing is, is it's supposed to create a, progress, a progressive rate. Uh, for the springs so it has less chance of, of reaching a natural harmonic range. Um, um, so it, start, it doesn't start to oscillate. You know, there's a lot of technical stuff and I'm sure it's true. The biggest thing about progressive rate springs is that the close coils need to go against the head. That's, that's always true in every application. The close coils need to go down against the cylinder head. And then we come to the conical style. And these are oftentimes called beehive springs. And they're called that because of the shape of the coil. Notice there's a taper at the top and then it kind of forms out into a regular square spring at the bottom. And this one has its benefits and, and, um, and really it comes down to efficiency on that one. So if we come over here to the, the, the table, we have um, our, our traditional, we'll just say this is our traditional spring where we've got just, it's, it's a square spring. But this one is actually a tapered spring or a progressive rate spring. So if we look at the distance between these coils, okay, and then we look at the distance between these, these are a lot closer, so this is more tightly wound. And what that creates is this seating area which is much larger against the bottom of the head. And by doing that, it will, it supposedly makes the spring more resilient and last longer. Um, the other thing that's supposed to happen is that the contact between the bottom spring or coil and the next coil, it's gonna be a softer contact, meaning it's gonna have, uh, again, longer life. Uh, Cause if we, uh, you know, we just, that's, that's what they say, and that's where we're going with. The next style is our dampened spring. Now notice on this one, we've got uh, the coil on the inside. I don't know if I can get that out right now. Should have gotten it out earlier. 
See if we can pop it out of there. Yeah, it's in there pretty good. There we go. Either way. So we have our dampen spring and notice the angle of them. So this dampen spring is actually a flat wire spring that is, uh, it's actually expanded in place. So this spring is rubbing on the inside of this wire and it's just gonna act like a dampener. It's gonna keep this spring from shaking as it's going open and closed. The other style is a or, or conic, or not, uh, our conical or a, a beehive spring. Now, this one has a lot of benefits and really it comes down to efficiency. The, the whole challenge for valve springs is to close the valve. And it's gonna have to happen at a higher RPM. Um, and if they want that engine to rev higher or maybe they wanna put a supercharger or a turbocharger on it, we're talking about at the factory level. Or they just want the engine to be more efficient. What has to happen is this valve spring has to pull up on the valve. So we have this, it gets compressed. So the spring gets compressed this way. The valve opens, no, it's moving with it, but it moves the valve open. The spring's job is to pull it all back up. And if we want that engine to rev higher or we want it to have uh, more, uh, more intake pressure from a supercharger or turbocharger, it means the spring has got to be stronger. To make it a stronger spring, they'd have to put a bigger wire. So let's say this is the original. Like, well, now we need more spring pressure, so let's put in this big spring here. And it does exactly what they want. But the problem is, or I wouldn't say the problem, is uh, this spring got heavier, meaning the cam and the lifter and the rockers and the push rod still have to push and, and, and compress the spring. That takes energy. Well, how about this? Instead of putting in a stronger spring, what if we lighten the assembly? What if we make it easier for the valve to close? Well, by doing that, or to do that, what they've done is they've tightened the end of the coil and brought it down to a tighter point, a smaller, smaller uh, end on it, and they have installed a smaller retainer. So let's say this was the one, the original one for the application, okay? And you see how big it is. But now we've got this one, which looks like it's about, you know, 30% smaller, and it would be much lighter on top of the weight of the coil. So these could actually be the same, uh, the same strength of coil, but this one here will close more quickly and more easily because its assembly weighs less, meaning it can pick it up faster to close the valve. Okay, so we have our conical or beehive. This is a tapered spring, and we have our dampened spring right there. All right, so now we get into some other components. We've got the retainers uh, and the valve locks. So our valve spring retainers, uh, they are uh, the components. We have our spring, and the spring pushes up against the retainer. And then we have our split keeper or the valve locks. Now the valve locks or the split keepers, they're actually grabbing onto uh, the valve lock groove and uh, you know it, it compresses against the valve and then notice the outside of the keeper has actually got a taper to it. That's why they're sometimes called tapered locks. And the inside hole where the, the locks go in the retainer is also tapered. It's a complementary angle. So it's the, the harder you push, the tighter they get. So each valve is gonna have two valve locks and each valve is gonna have one retainer and uh, that's everything about spring retainers and valve locks. Then we come to the last section, I believe, uh, is our cylinder head uh, uh, valve stem seals. Now we have different types of valve stem seals available, uh, and it depends on the application. In the older days, uh, if you go back far enough, they didn't use valve stem seals. Uh, it was just, the valve needs lubrication and we're gonna burn oil, oh well. So they decided at some point, well, we need these engines to last a little bit longer. We want them to be uh, require less maintenance. So the first one they came up with it was an umbrella seal. And this one acts exactly like it sounds. It is an umbrella that goes over the valve. So the idea is 
our our valve guide, which is going up and down. Let me do it over here. So the idea is that our valve guide, um, with our valve going in and out, it needs lubrication inside there. Well, oil has to get in up through the top and down in between, but they can't have an excess amount of oil get in there. Now the way the, the umbrella style works is it, it just covers this section with an umbrella. Just like in the picture there, that spring section grabs onto the valve and it moves with the valve and that big orange piece just kind of comes down and hangs over the edge and any oil that splashes against it just falls over to the side and misses it just like an umbrella would keep rain off of you. And that's an umbrella seal. The next style, which is our positive band, uh, this one here is made out, it's a soft seal and it's got a, a retaining ring here and a tension ring here. And this one is basically a wiper seal. So these last three are all wiper seals. And really it comes down to um, um, kind of their shape. So we have our positive band here. The next style is a metal clad. The metal clad seal works much the same way. Now notice this spring right here. This is what's called a garter spring. This one has a garter spring and that keeps the tension of the rubber seal or the Viton seal against the stem because on this one and this one and this one, the valve is actually moving inside the stem, stem seal. The umbrella, the stem seal is moving with the valve. So it's called metal clad because this outer section right here is made out of, of, of steel or some metal or alloy. Our last style is a top hat. And a top hat style spring or yeah, valve stem seal is also what's called a spring seat. So I have two of them right here. Where did I put them? I had two. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so. So we have our top hat style here. And the way this one works is that our valve spring is going to sit down against it like this. And the reason they do this, the reason you have to have a spring seat on this application, because this is an aluminum cylinder head valve stem seal, and to run this spring against aluminum would, would definitely damage the aluminum. So this guy acts as a, a seat for the spring to sit against in between the head. Then we have a metal clad seal right here. And this metal clad seal actually is used in this application where it gets pressed onto the top of this a valve stem seal, and then the valve goes through it and it operates just like this. So the valve seal stays stationary and the valve operates up and down. Now these valve stem seals do meter the amount of oil that goes through because some oil has to make it through, but not a lot. Not a lot needs to make it through there. So they meter down the valve uh, stem seal lubrication uh, to a specified amount. Not so much that it gets burnt in the engine heavily to cause oil consumption, but just enough to lubricate it. And that's it. So when we come back, we're going to have our next section, which is going to be about servicing and machining cylinder head stuff. And um, I guess we'll see you then.